Hi everyone and welcome to this tour on Responsible AI Tracker. Responsible AI Tracker is an open source extension to the JupyterLab framework and helps data scientists with tracking and comparing different iterations or experiments on model improvement. JupyterLab itself is the latest web-based interactive development environment for notebooks, code and data for Project Jupyter. In comparison to Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Lab gives practitioners the opportunity to work with more than one notebook at the same time to better organize their work. Responsible AI Tracker takes this to the next step by bringing together notebooks, models, and visualization reports on model comparison, all within the same interface. Responsible AI Tracker is also part of the Responsible AI Toolbox a larger open source effort at Microsoft for bringing together tools for accelerating and operationalizing responsible AI. During this tour, you will learn how to use Tracker to compare and validate different model improvement experiments. You will also learn how to use the extension in combination with other tools in the toolbox, such as Responsible AI Dashboard and the Responsible AI Mitigations Library. Without further ado, let me show you how this works. Here I have installed the Responsible AI Tracker extension, but I have not created a project yet. So let's create a project together. Our project is going to use the UCI income data set. This is a classification task for um, predicting whether an individual earns more or less than 50K. It is also possible to bring in a notebook where perhaps you may have created some code to build a model or to clean up some data. So that's what I'm doing right now. Let's take a look at the project that was just created and the notebook that we uh, just imported. Here we're training on a split of the UCI income data set and um, we are building a model with five estimators. It's a graded boosted model and uh, we are also doing some basic feature imputation and encoding. After training the model, we can then register the model to the notebook so that in the future we can perhaps remember which code was used to generate the model on the first place. So um, we just pick the model file, we're going to select the machine learning platform, in this case sklearn, and the test data set where we want to evaluate on. Next, we're giving a few more information items related to the formatting and the class label, and then we're going to register the model. We see that the overall model accuracy is around 78.9%, but this doesn't give us yet enough information to understand where most errors are concentrated on. So to perform this aggregated model evaluation, we are going to use the Responsible AI dashboard. And this is also part of the Responsible AI toolbox. It's a dashboard that consists of several visual components on error analysis, interpretability, data exploration, and fairness assessment. The first component that we see here is error analysis. This visualization is telling us that the overall error rate is 21% which coincides to the accuracy number that we saw on Tracker. And um, next, it's also showing us that there exists certain cohorts in the data, such as, for example, this one, where the relationship is um, husband or wife, meaning that the individual is uh, married, for which the error rate increases to 38.9%. And at the same time, for individuals who are not married on the other side of the um, visualization, we see that the error rate is only 6.4%. We also see other more problematic cohorts, such as, for instance, um, individuals who are married and have a number of education years higher than 11 years, for which the error rate is 58%. To understand better what is going on with these cohorts, we are going to look at um, the data analysis and the class distribution for all uh, these cohorts. In overall, for um, the whole data, we see that um, there exists a skew um, towards the negative label. There exist more individuals that earn less than 50k. 
But when we look at exactly the same visualization for the married cohort, we see that the story is actually more balanced here. And for the not married cohort, um, the balance looks more similar than the prior on the overall data. And in particular for the cohort that has a very high error rate at 58%, uh, married and number of education years higher than 11, we see that um, the prior completely uh, flips on the other end and there exist more individuals in this cohort that earn more than 50K. So based on um, this piece of information, we are going to go back to Tracker to see if we can mitigate some of these issues and also compare them. So let's now um, import yet another notebook that performs a general data balancing um, approach. And um, we are going to import this from our tour files in uh, the open source repository. These data balancing techniques, um, basically what it's doing is that it is uh, generating the same number of samples from both classes, the positive and the negative one. And if we see how the data looks like after rebalancing, we can see that uh, the full data frame is perfectly balanced. However, more positive labels have been sampled from the merit cohort, and that is probably because the merit cohort initially had more positive examples to start with. So um, after uh, training this model, we can then register the model that was generated by um, this particular um, notebook. And um, here we can bring in the model, we can register exactly the same uh, test data set so that we can have a one-to-one -one comparison. And we give in the class and see how these two models compare. We can see that in overall data balancing has helped, the accuracy has improved, but we want to understand more. We want to understand how the trade-off between accuracy and precision plays off. And indeed, we can see here that even though the overall accuracy has improved by 3.7%, precision has dropped by a large margin. And when we look at the married and not married cohorts, which are the ones that we studied earlier with the Responsible AI dashboard, we can see that indeed most of the improvement comes from improvements in the married cohort. However, we also see that um, a lot of the precision has declined in the merit cohort, which brings up the question of whether um, this type of balancing that is more um, like a blanket and general approach has hurt the precision uh, for the merit cohort, mostly because most of the positive data was uh, sampled from this one. So then the question is, can we do this in a more custom way? Can we perhaps isolate the changes in data balancing between the two cohorts so that we can get the best of uh, both worlds. And there are two ideas that perhaps come in mind here. One of them could be, well, we could balance, we can perfectly balance the two cohorts separately. And the other idea would be perhaps uh, to balance the merit cohort, but since um, the not merit cohort has a good accuracy um, from the start, maybe it would be better to not make any changes. We will try both here and uh, both of these notebooks are available in our open source um, repository. I'm going to um, upload both of these in the project now. The one that uh, balances both cohorts and the one that um, leaves the not married cohort um, unbalanced. And we are going to talk about this as the targeted mitigation approach. So first let's see how we have implemented both of these mitigation techniques using the RAI mitigations library. In particular, we are going to use the data balancing uh, functionalities in the library. And here um, we see that we have created the cohorts. The first cohort is the merit cohort and the other one is the complement of that. And in this case, this um, coincides with the not merit cohort. And we have defined two pipelines, one for each cohort. And through the cohort manager class, we can sort of assign which pipeline uh, needs to be run in an isolated way for each of the cohorts. 
and we see that basically these are um, doing the same thing. They are resampling the data so that in the end we have equal frequencies of each of the classes. And um, this is how the data looks like after the rebalancing. The overall data is perfectly balanced and so are the two other cohorts. And the other um, mitigation technique that we are going to explore here is to apply rebalancing only for the merit cohort because this is the one that had higher errors on the first place. And for the second one, we are giving an um, empty pipeline. And this is how the data looks like after this mitigation. The merit cohort is perfectly balanced, but we have not touched the distribution for the rest of the data. And after this, we are going to compare all of these models together and uh, we're going to compare them across different metrics, but also across um, the cohorts of interest. So after registering the new models that we just trained with the two new uh, mitigation techniques, we can then go back to the model comparison table and see um, how the model has improved in all these cases. So first, let's compare um, the strategy where we balance both cohorts um, separately. We see that this type of mitigation technique is at least as good as the baseline. However, most of the improvement is focused on the merit cohort, and we see a sudden drop in performance for the not merit cohort. Often, we refer to these cases as backward incompatibility issues in machine learning, where we see new errors being introduced with model updates. And these are particularly important for real-world deployments because there may have been end users that um, are accustomed to trusting the model for certain cohorts, in this particular for the not merit cohorts. And uh, by seeing these performance drops, this may lead to um, loss of trust in the user base. So this is the story for um, the uh, mitigation technique that balances both cohorts. For the next mitigation technique, where we saw that we could target the data balancing only for the merit cohort and leave the rest of the data untouched, we see that in overall there is a 6% improvement, which is the highest that we see in um, this uh, set of notebooks. But at the same time, we see that um, there are no performance drops for the not merit cohort, which is a um, positive outcome. And um, of course, there is um, good improvement in um, the cohort that we were set to improve in the first place for the merit cohort. And um, the precision is higher than um, in the blanket approach where we just balanced the whole data. So in this way, we can get like a good picture of what has improved and what has um, not improved across all models, across different um, cohorts and across uh, different uh, metrics. And we can create um, more cohorts by using the interface. For example, earlier we saw that um, the um, performance drops were mostly um, focused in the cohort of married individuals and who had a number of education years that is higher than 11. So we're trying to bring in that cohort now and see uh, what happened to, to this one. And here we are... Um, adding the uh, merit relationship as a filter. And then we are going to add another filter that is related to uh, the number of education years. And we want this to be higher than 11. So let's save this cohort and um, see what happened here. So we saw that initially the accuracy for this cohort was only 41.9%. And through the different mitigation techniques, we are able to reach up to 72 or 73 um, percent by targeting the mitigation to the types of problems that we saw in the first place. Thanks for listening to this tour. If you would like to collaborate or send us feedback either about the Responsible AI Tracker extension or about the Responsible AI Mitigations library, Either reach us out on GitHub or otherwise at rai-toolbox at microsoft.com.